So we finally have a Punisher TV series. The question is, does it live up to his appearance in Daredevil season two? Let's talk about it. Six months after Frank Castle has completed his mission to punish the people responsible for the death of his family, he's presumed dead and living as a construction worker. But when an investigation into a Homeland Security officer's death brings Castle back into action, he discovers the conspiracy goes far deeper than he realized. Overall, I thoroughly enjoyed The Punisher. This is one of my favorite seasons of the Netflix Marvel Universe, but I couldn't help but feeling a little bit disappointed with the overall direction and emphasis of the first season. So before I dive into my full thoughts, be sure to put your thoughts down below in the comment section. What did you think about it? Your favorite episodes, least favorite episodes, what you liked, what you didn't like, all that fun stuff for a nice discussion. Let's start talking about the good. Right off the bat, of course, you start talking about John Bernthal as the Punisher. He is, of course, the star. He's the main character. We spend our time with him, digging into his character, and he just brings such like a humanity to such a cold character that it's very easy to just be a monster that's headed in the right direction, and he's able to make him human and feel like a person that's gone through so much and been so damaged and tortured by what they've done, what's been done to them, and what's been taken away from them, that you can just see this raging creature that just targets evil and goes after it with a vengeance, and he brings all of that together in his performance, and at the same time, you can he's, he's so distant from people, but have these little moments where there's just a blurt of charisma and charm to him where you get to see who he was and he pulls all this together in such a way that makes for a compelling character um, that just stands out and is so unique in what could be such a straightforward flat one note character oh and just in general the cast of the show is, is quite good um, the Netflix Marvel shows tend to like kind of sprinkle in these character actors throughout that just make for very solid performances so one of the ones that stood out to me was Paul Schultz who was uh, in the first three seasons of 24 so that's playing one of these government officer people and he's doing that again here except a much more evil one he's also in John Rambo the fourth Rambo movie from 10 years ago and so you put actors like him in there or a guy like Ben Barnes playing kind of the counter to Frank Castle in this and they just bring a, a, a level of likability to characters that are unlikable and just make them something that it just kind of pops and like with Ben Barnes in particular you, you don't know if you love him you hate him you don't know what side he's on as you're going through things you can see a Weasley side you can see a positive side at different moments in time you're not quite sure what's going on and all that makes for a compelling stories, the mystery of this conspiracy unfolds in front of us. From there, let's move on to the action, and because it is a Punisher series, you get a good bit of action throughout the season, and they find different ways to bring different types of action to it. It's not just uh, each episode, he shows up with a machine gun and mows down a room full of people. It's not like that. It's not like each episode tries to repeat the prison fight scene from Daredevil Season 2. No, it's, it has different levels to what it tries to do. So sometimes he's working with other military guys doing military type stuff. Sometimes it's him running around with a sledgehammer. And sometimes it's him setting traps and you get different sides to what he can do in almost all the episodes, which makes for some nice variety and a variety of different scenes. You're like, oh man, I want to watch that one again because that was really cool when he did this. And uh, they find different ways to shoot it because sometimes he's being chased by military guys and so they've got head cams on him. So it does creative different things to give first person perspectives, different types of things like that. And of course, if you've seen the Netflix Marvel shows, you know it can get really violent. So if you're like me and you like your action movies to get really gnarly and violent, you will be very satisfied for with much of the action in it because it gives you what you want, especially some of the later stuff. It just gets so bloody. It's covered in blood everywhere. It gets pretty crazy with the bone smashing and his just vicious brutality towards evil. The season blends an overarching story with a series of kind of episodic stories kind of sprinkled in through the mix. And with that, you get kind of a much deeper mythology and by far the most grounded of anything 
associated with the MCU by far. I mean, there's no superheroes showing up with powers and magic hammers or anything like that or wacky technology. This functions as a very grounded story and you get that side of the story and the overarching narrative and the episodic episodes, you kind of get these little moments where you see someone wrong, someone close to Frank or someone's in danger or he just gets his eyes set on someone and you could just feel this tension immediately start like winding up. He's like, ooh, they shouldn't have messed with that person. And you know something's going to go down and it's going to be awesome. There's an episode in here that kind of uh, tackles an incident that happens in a hotel from different people's perspectives. And so it's told out of order as different people are recalling what happened. And you kind of just get this different, the different views people have of Frank from the way they tell the different story that makes for a really cool episode in there. And also the season tackles gun violence of sorts and mental health and violence begetting violence and the consequences of actions. All this sorts of stuff is tackled in an appropriate way that doesn't sound preachy at all. It doesn't take a side. It's not trying to lecture the audience, but it puts some ideas out there that are interesting to think about, especially if you're gonna do a more grounded version of The Punisher. You have to stop and think, if someone was doing this, what would happen? What would that look like in our world? And it does a little bit of that kind of thing. But as much as I thoroughly enjoyed this season, there were things about it that were a little bit frustrating to me. So with that said, let's move on to the bad. And when I say bad, there was nothing here that I was like, oh man, I don't like that. Oh, that's, that actor's bad. There are just things that didn't feel like the mix was quite right. So I talked about the overarching narrative versus kind of the standalone episodes. And I think my biggest issue with the season is the blend between the two. So there's a ton of time dedicated to this overarching story about Frank's backstory and how it ties into a government conspiracy and a very much a continuation of the plot line from Daredevil season two, kind of digging into the government and other things that happened and what Frank did and all sorts of stuff. And it's been so much time on that, that it just feels like, all right, we're kind of rehashing what we did before. We, we These questions were answered. I didn't need it answered a second time. And it keeps thinking, and, and it's interesting, it's not bad, but you're thinking, I, I just wanted to get to Frank blowing bad guys away, taking out the new cheese and stuff like that. And it just keeps retreading a little bit stuff that felt familiar. Likewise, it spends a bunch of time on Microchip and his family and Frank's relationship with their family. And you start thinking, okay, what? Well, we're still doing the kind of this origin story at times. And it just the mix of it felt right, like off throughout the whole season. And as you get later into the season, it starts doing kind of more of these standalones, the hotel episode I mentioned, and there's one, a plot line about kind of a crazy lone gunman bomber person that Frank's after. And when it went to those, I was like, oh, I really like this. This is awesome. And you start getting this vibe for him as, you know, the Punisher taking out bad guys. And it kind of, like, as soon as that happened, I was like, yes, this is what I wanted the show to be. I'm not anti the backstory stuff, but I wanted more of this. And so if the focus had shifted more in the direction of the Punisher being the Punisher, as opposed to trying to get us to understand why he's the Punisher and what would make a man do this. We already covered that. We already did all that so we can get to the Punisher being the Punisher. Along those same lines, because of the mix of the season and there's so much stuff with Frank and Microchip trying to dig into stuff and watching Microchip's family, it felt like the actor cast to play Microchip was either miscast or they just picked a poor direction to go with for the character. And what I mean by that, it's not like the actor did a bad job, but when you've got Frank spending so much time interacting just with one person. They didn't design the microchip character to kind of be a plucky comedic character or have like a specific charm to him. He just felt really nervous and was scared about his family all the time. So you've got cold Frank Castle who's struggling with PTSD. And then you've got a guy so worried about his family and lonely and neurotic, but not in a fun way that it didn't have a, a spark to it in their relationship. And you could have designed the microchip character put a different actor in there that would have had, I think something that brought a bit more levity and humanity to it to make those scenes a little bit more engaging for me since it covered so much of this season with the two of them just interacting and researching stuff and plotting things together. 
together. So that was a little bit frustrating for me. Finally, given the scope of some of the action sequences throughout the season and how exciting and visceral some of them are, where it decides to end with kind of the action side of things and land the plane felt pretty anticlimactic and I don't think it had quite the punch that they were going for. Overall, I'm going to give this season an 8 out of 10. There's a lot here to really like. And even my criticisms, they're more opportunity cost criticisms as opposed to actual pointing at things and saying that's bad. And what I mean by that is what they gave me was good. I just think that there was something that they hinted at that was better. And I didn't need as much kind of backstory more on the conspiracy. I would have wished we could have progressed it a little bit further in him as just the Punisher. And to some extent, that might be for some of you a good thing in that the show, I was talking with someone about this, felt like Homeland, the actual show Homeland, because it deals with Homeland Security, conspiracies, investigating type stuff. It's more of an action-based version of that. And so that might be a very big positive for some of you. If you just want the brutal action of the Punisher, punishing bad guys, it could have given us a little bit more of that. Anyway, that's my take on it. Tell me your thoughts down below in the comment section. I'd love to get a nice lively discussion about the Punisher down there, what everybody thought about the good, the bad, the mix of the season, the episodes, all that fun stuff. Also, no, I'm going to be ranking the Punishers in d just a few days. We're going to have Thomas Jane, Ray Stevenson, uh, John Bernthal, Dolph Lundgren, all that fun stuff coming up in just a few days. I've rewatched all of them in preparation for this season, so I'm pretty excited about that. And if you're new to my channel, please consider clicking that subscribe button. I do movie reviews, TV reviews, ranking videos. But the key thing is I don't want to just talk about movies. I want to talk about movies with you. So join me in the comment section. Let's have a lively discussion. And thank you so much for watching.